Hey, welcome back again. So in the previous video, I showed you how to make this table, uh, but we want to go further than this, right? We want to make nice charts and nice graphs. So in this video, we will be talking about pie charts and if we have time, line charts, but I might make a separate video for that. Uh, it's very simple and it looks very nice. It has a lot of nice colors on Plotly. So let's get started with that. The first thing that I want to do is actually create columns because how I imagine it right now is one column is an input. So I can also show you how the input can affect the Plotly graph and a pie chart that shows me something. Um, for this, I'm going to go a little bit further than this one and then say input column and pie chart column. And if you remember how we did this is basically saying streamlet beta columns and I want two columns. So the tricky thing of working with data in, in this setting and not with Jupyter Notebooks is when you do some things to data, it's very hard to see what you did and what the data looks like. Uh, so that's why I'm going to do some changes to my data, but it's very hard for me to show it to you what I'm doing. So I'm going to try my best. I hope it will work. So in our previous um, app, when we did this main app, uh, I created this pickup location um, counts. So these are different locations of where one person could be picked up in New York City. They have certain IDs. You know, when you look at a map, you can see where IDs uh, correspond to and how many times. So we're basically at each bar it shows you how many times a pickup occurred in that given location with this ID. Uh, so I already have that table and okay, let me show you what the table looks like for now. And I'm going to say print the name of this table is PU pickup location distribution. Um, so we can see it here if it reruns. So we can see it here. This is a very long table. Um, this is the, actually the location ID. This is the count of how many times a pickup happened in this place. So that's why I want to reset the index and change the column name. So that's what I'm going to do now, just so that you can follow what I'm doing. And then print it again to see what it looks like now. Okay, so now we see that it changed. This is the index. This is the pickup location ID, and this is the count. And this is what I wanted it to look like. The next thing that I need to do is put this in a pie chart. So how I'm going to do that this time, I'm going to use the Plotly Express. Again, I'm creating a chart. I'm saying this time Plotly Express. I want a pie chart and I want this pie chart to show me the values of this one. So let's see if it's going to work. Like I can show you immediately what this looks like without any customization. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that it didn't work. I guess I need to specify the values and the names. Uh, so the values or at least the values, I think the values is going to be if we check it here is going to be the count. So let's see. And the names of each fraction of the pie is going to be this one that I named location ID. Let's see if it looks better now. All right, so we have a gigantic wheel here. It's very hard to read, but you know, it's at least it's colorful. It has a legend here, shows us which one is which. Um, but um, like now, very happy with this. So instead, what I want to do is I want to get the top n uh, or like say top five or top ten um, locations and see how they are distributed. Um, so you know, this doesn't have to make sense that much, but uh, let let's see what we can do with this. So. Then what I have to do is change the value of this, right? So I'm going to say this one equals to had, just give me the 10 most populated places. Okay, this looks nicer. It's, it's like a cute little uh, wheel that we have here. Um, but before we go and customize this, I, as I said, I also want to get input from the user. So I don't want to just say, okay, you can only see the top 10. So what 
I can do is get input on how many um, of the top top n or what is the n number for the user what what do they want to see so we did this before so I'm going to go over it very quickly we can add for example a text input from the user uh, it's not very preferred preferable because right now if I do that what's going to happen is whatever the person so we're saying the default number is 10 but once they give us some input it's going to be this top n value is actually going to be string so that's why we want to cast it into integer so that we can use it as a head so I'm going to change this 10 with top n but mm, it's probably better if you just have a drop down um, uh, option that people can choose from because if you have it this way and if they don't give uh, if they don't put something in that can be turned into a number then it's going to give an error but for now just for you know showing you something quick I just want to sh do it this way so if I save it here and go back all right this is nice then I can change this number to 20 and it will show me the top 20 locations yeah but if I you know if I write something that cannot be casted into integer then it's going to give me an error yeah so I'm going to keep it to integers for now but as I said just maybe make it a drop down menu of what pe people can choose or even I think a slider would work here like we have here a slider like we have here so all right let's customize this a little bit so what do we have here we have this guy and you know okay it has a nice um, hover information it's saying this is the location 237 it is you know 12 percent 12.4 percent of the of the top 10 locations but at the same time it also tells you to count so this is good but if you want to change the name of the hover of what's showing in the hover name you can also change it to like pick up location All right, let me just um yeah uh and save it and now when i come here you can see that when i hover over it uh on top of this little information box it also has a name so if you have something else on your data it's like this needs to be in the data set in a column uh, you can also choose for that to be the name of this uh, little fraction all right so but i you know obviously this looks a little bit awkward so i want to fix this a little bit um that's why i'm going to bring in the update layout function okay so the first thing is i don't really want to show the legend because you know when you're hovering over it it already tells you which one is which so and also you know it's kind of hard to see that this color is this color or is it this color you know so i'm just going to uh change show legend to false and um let's also work with the margins right away And if you're asking or if you're thinking like how I decide these margins, I basically try something and see what happens and then I change it. So I'm not really like, a, you know, this doesn't automatically come to me. <laughs> okay, that looks better. By the way, I did another typo, but I fixed it uh, secretly. <laughs> so uh, make sure that you don't write the wrong thing. All right, this looks better. This is like, it's, it's, it's big enough. Uh, but there are actually also ways to determine how big you want this to be so what i'm going to do for that is actually right after here uh, as i said i'm just kind of like trying trial and error i'm not doing it right now because i already tried it <laughs> so i think 300 was a good width for it and because you know the pie chart like it's the width and height are kind of like indexed to each other doesn't really matter what height what uh, width that you give it um, but maybe I also specify the height to be 302 and then it will look it will be a nice little square all right again we we'll do the same thing I can actually I'm even going to like copy and paste this from here I want the background to be nice and the same color as this background 
And the last thing that I want to do actually is maybe show you how to change the font size too, but that's also something that you can change. So font by itself has a lot of options. Uh, maybe sh I can show you here in the layout section font. Yes, as you can see, you can change the font family, you can change the font size, the color. These are all the options that you can do. For now, I'm only going to change the color and the size. Again, you give it in a dictionary. dictionary yes, that's correct. Color. I have a color that I decided here, so I'm just going to put it in. But of course, like if you're going to change all of these things, uh, it's probably better to have it in a central place and you just like put the name so you don't have to copy and paste the same color name every single time. And let's change the size to like 15. I, I don't know. Maybe that's like we want it to be a little bit bigger. And the final product is this. Now it looks, you know, it looks like it really belongs here. If you think that this looks very naked, maybe you can say I want the, the legend here. That's, that's your choice, but this is how we uh, customize and create a Plotly pie chart. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, why not give it a like? And maybe even subscribe, you know, it's nice for me to see when people like things. And also kind of motivates me to do more of this work when I see that people are following me. And on top of that, if you're thinking, well, Mosra, I like the way that you're teaching things. Maybe then you should go check out my course called Hands-On Data Science, Complete Your First Portfolio Project. I'll be sure to leave the link somewhere here if I can, or maybe in the description. It is a project course where we start from scratch to do a data science project and take it all the way to the end where we have a presentable project. And this course will give you the skills to finish a course independently by yourself and also just teach you how a data scientist thinks and works. So if you want to become a data scientist or if you're just a person who wants to update their skills and know how to work with data and just become a relevant person in today's world, go check out this course. I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you around.